For a lot of hard problems, and not just math problems, the key to finding the solution? Go one step at a time. It's especially true of probability problems like this one, in which we have an event, then another event, then another event. Those events are our steps. In this problem, the steps are rolling this six-sided die, just two red, two blue, two yellow faces. We're going to roll it three times. Find a probability of getting each color once. Now, the first step is that first roll. And that first roll is always okay. Doesn't matter what we roll, we get to go on to the next step. Now, for the second step, we have to make sure we don't get the same color as the first step. So the first step, that gives us some color. That knocks out two faces. We can't get on the second step. That leaves us four good faces for the second step. Out of the six total, gives us a two-thirds probability of getting past the second step. Then we have to get past the third step. Now, we only get to the third step if we get past the first two steps, which means we have two different colors on the first two steps. That leaves us one color for the third step. One color is two good faces out of the six remaining for a probability of one-third. We need to get past all three of these. We always get past the first step. Two-thirds of the time, we'll also get past the second step. And then of all the times we get past the first two steps, one-third of the time, we'll also get past the third step, which gives us an overall probability of one times two-thirds times one-third which is two-ninths. We're on to the next problem. Now in this problem we have a bag with red marbles and blue marbles. We're going to pull out two marbles, one at a time, without replacement. That means we take out one, look at its color, keep it out, take out a second one. Probability of getting two reds is one-fifth. Probability of getting two blues is also one-fifth. We want to figure out how many marbles are in the bag. And all we're given is these probabilities. What do these probabilities tell us? Well, the probabilities are the same. That tells me I have the same number of red marbles as I have blue marbles. Because if I had more blue marbles, there would be more ways of getting two blues than of getting two reds. Which means the probability of getting two blues would be higher. Basically the same thing the other way around. If I had more reds, the probability of getting two reds would be higher. But the probabilities are the same, so the number of reds is the same as the number of blues. We still don't know how many there are. That's what we need to figure out. Number of marbles in the bag still unknown. Unknown. Variables are good at unknowns. I'm going to assign a variable, but I'm going to assign it to the number of red, which is also the same as the number of blue. Let's me bring in the variable. Let's me use the fact that I have the same number of each. And I'm going to write an expression for the probability of getting two reds. I'm going to write that in terms of n, because then I can set that equal to 1 fifth. I'll have an equation. I can solve equations. So now I've got to write that expression. I'm going to write that expression one step at a time. First step, probability of the first is red. Well, if I have the same number of reds as I have of blues, probability of the first one comes out red is just a half. Now the probability of the second is also red. Well, if I've got one red already, that leaves n minus 1 reds in the bag. I've taken a marble out, so there's 2n minus 1 total. And in order to get two reds, I need both of these things to happen. Half the time, I'm going to get the first one is red. And then of that half the time, n minus 1 over 2n minus 1 of the time, I'm going to get the second one is also red. So there's my overall probability of getting two reds. And we're told that, that equals 1 fifth. So now I have my equation. Now that we have an equation, it's algebra time. We're going to solve this equation one step at a time. First step, multiply these two fractions. I'm going to have n minus 1 over 4n minus 2. And we know that this has to equal 1 fifth. Now clean this up, get rid of the fractions. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4n minus 2, multiply both sides by 5. I'm going to have 5 times n minus 1 equals 4n minus 2. Multiply out this left side. 5n minus 5 equals 4n minus 2. 
clean this up, subtract 4n from both sides, add 5 to both sides, and I'm going to get n equals 3. Now here's the real dangerous step of the problem. It's tempting to write down 3 and move on, but I'll always go back, read the question, make sure you answer what's asked. We're asked for how many marbles are in the bag. n is 3. 3 of each color. 3 red, 3 blue. That gives us 6 total. Now we're ready to move on. And for our last problem, we have an ant standing at the origin of a coordinate grid. And the ant's going to take four steps, one at a time. Each is one unit in length, and each is going to be forward, backwards, right, left, chosen at random. We want the probability that after four steps, the ant's right back home, right back where the ant started. Ah, well, we know how we're going to analyze this. One step at a time, that's right. Well, overall, the ant can take those four steps in four times four times four times four ways. So there are four choices for each of the steps. So there's four to the fourth total paths. We want to figure out how many of these will bring the ant back home. One step at a time. First step, the ant can go forward, right, left, back. You know, it doesn't really matter which of those the ant does. Now, I'm just going to focus on one of them. I'm just going to focus on forward. The ant goes forward. How can the ant get back home? Now, if we start off in any other direction, it's going to be basically the same analysis. Give us the same number of paths back home. Nice symmetry there. So I'm just going to focus on the one. Focus on the ant goes forward. How many paths will bring the ant back home? First step goes forward. Second step, the ant also goes forward. Well, if the ant takes a second step forward, the only way the ant can get back home after four steps is to go back and back. Only one way back home. All right, so what if the ant goes forward and then goes to the right? Well, now there's two ways to get back home. Down and back, back down. There's two ways to get home. And that's the same situation if the ant goes up and then goes left. Two ways to get back home. What if the ant starts off going forward, then turns around, goes backward, comes right back home. But the ant still has to take two more steps. Well, now there are four ways to get back home. You can just repeat that and go this way and back, this way and back, down and back. It gives us four ways to get back home. So if the ant starts off going forward, there's four plus two plus two plus one. There's nine ways to get back home. We have basically the same situation if the ant start off right, left, or down. In any of those cases, we have nine ways to get back home. So for each of the four first steps, there are nine ways to get back home. So there's four times nine, it's 36 ways to get back home out of our four to the fourth total paths. Cancel out of four. We have nine over four cubed, which gives us a probability of nine over 64. And we tackled that problem one step at a time. Hey, math counts. Want to know where your bot is? Your bot's right here, hanging out with me in the Math Counts Mini Studio. Bot's helping me tell everybody about your new contest. Now here's how the contest works. You go to Instagram.com slash Math Counts Foundation, you're going to see all these pictures. The contest is for you to supply more pictures of your own. Now you have to send in your picture by December 2nd, 2014. Put it up on Instagram. Tag it Math Counts. Want pictures of your team or pictures of some of your favorite Math Counts memories? Like there's Bill Clinton's favorite Math Counts memory right there. Now, if you watch very closely, you might see one of my Math Counts memories from when I was a speaker. Ah, there it is, back in 1994. Now, I wanted to put a picture of when I was a student, but we didn't have cameras back then. So I asked my mom for any Math Counts memories, and she hooked me up with this vintage Math Counts trophy. And check this out, vintage Math Counts t-shirt that I wore when I went to Nationals way back in 1985. And yeah, you can see why my NFL career didn't really work out. Now, speaking of t-shirts, there are prizes for this competition. One prize for this competition is, oh, that's Boogie t-shirt. You know you want one. In fact, you want this one. I'll sign it myself. Here we go. I'm going to sign this t-shirt. Don't try this at home. I am a trained professional. Let's see how this goes. This is much harder than it looks, especially with this pen. All right, there we go. We'll have to sign that again later. All right. You don't want to use t-shirt. 
Uh, I got something better than a used t-shirt. How about your very own boogie bot right there? Right, check it out. You got your very own boogie bot. We're going to give out some of these as prizes as well. So once again, a recap. We got Instagram.com, Math Counts Foundation. Deadline is December 2nd, 2014. Put up your picture. Tag at Math Counts. Let's boogie.